If I had known what I know now 12 years ago when I had started production, I would be an absolute monster. By the way, for those of you guys who don't know me, I am the CEO and co-founder of Cymatics.fm. I've worked with hundreds of producers over the years, not to mention we've had our sounds used by Drake, Future, Bad Bunny, Lil Uzi Vert, and pretty much every big name in the industry. So let's get into the first thing I wish I knew. Imperfection is more perfect than perfection. I know that sounds like a mind fuck, but let me explain. So let's take something like some basic piano chords. So they sound pretty good, but I think they could sound a lot better if they were imperfect, not so on the grid. So the first thing I'm gonna do is highlight all the notes. I'm gonna hit Alt S, which will add a strumizer. This will make everything kind of hit not perfectly, right? The velocities will all be a little bit more natural. It'll be more of a natural strum and they won't be right on the grid. And immediately it just adds more life to the chords, but we can actually take this a step further and make it even more imperfect. So I'm actually gonna add our plugin Origin now, which is one, gonna apply a filter to it, so it's gonna sound a little bit more muffled. I'm even gonna use this reel-to-reel -reel, uh, noise inside of it to sound like a crappy like cassette player. Not to mention there's a movement knob here. You can, you can really hear that wobbling of the pitch, which is going out of key. Technically, we're making it sound worse, but as we keep doing this, we're adding more character to it. And honestly, that's the beautiful part about music and imperfections, it makes stuff sound better. So this exact same thing happens with Super Saws. So right here, I'm just gonna do the basic serum patch. I'm gonna play those same chords. So if I turn up this unison knob, it's gonna create multiple voices. And then I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna play with this detune thing, which is essentially going to spread them out and literally have detune sounds all together. But that detuneness is a part of that perfection, that imperfect perfection I've been talking about. So I'm gonna play it normal and then I'm, you're gonna hear me add the voices in and detune them a little bit. So much more full, so much more character to it. And you can even take it a step further because I could do things and add like a glide, for example. And as you can hear, like that glide is coming from out of key and in, but it's just adding so much character and personality to it. So this even applies to drums. Let me show you this clap snare example. Here's two claps and one snare that I layered together. Sounds good, but if I take some of these and I move them off the grid, like I'm gonna move this clap forward a little bit and I'm gonna move this one back a little bit, all of a sudden now they're not all hitting perfectly, they're hitting like kind of like that, right? A little bit off of the grid, unquantized. And what that's gonna do is that's just gonna add a bit of character to your clap, watch. It's very subtle. When you separate them a little bit, sometimes it just gives a snare a little bit more body because things have a second to kind of like hit. And one last note on this imperfection thing is that that's a lot of the reasons people like to work with live musicians. If you think about it, when somebody plays guitar, when a vocalist sings, nobody's perfect, right? They're not perfectly on the grid. Their voice isn't perfectly on certain notes, but all those little things are honestly like some of the reasons why the best music is the best music. Tip number two. I used to think I had to be an expert at sound design and create every single synth, every single drum sample possible. I also thought I had to be an expert at music theory and take hours of music theory coaching and lessons and read books about it so I can write the best melodies. And in my opinion, chasing every single area of production is a fool's game. Each one of those categories I just mentioned, you can spend an entire lifetime learning about and you'll still have stuff to learn by the time you're 80. Which is why if you try to do them all, you're probably gonna suck at all of them. There's an old saying, if you try to chase two rabbits, you will not catch either one. Personally, I wanted to be really good at sample manipulation. This means I often find other plugins and samples that helps me cover other areas of production. I don't wanna be the guy who can make the best kicks, I just wanna find the best kicks, right? Because my focus is around sample manipulation. So I might take a sample that sounds like this. Love, love, love. And I'm gonna flip it real quick, so let's see what uh, let's see how it comes out.
take this, I'm gonna pitch it up. And when I focus in this one area of sample manipulation, the reason I like it is, is that I don't have to become the person who's good at recording vocals. I don't have to become the engineer. I've decided that I'm gonna be good at sample manipulation. And the reason I chose that as well is that I get to dive into multiple genres, right? If I'm good at manipulating samples, to change my sound, all I do is mess with EDM samples instead of hip hop samples, or all I do is mess with vocals instead of messing with this. And I'm able to flex into a lot of different areas without losing focus in what I want my expertise to be. And by the way, if you love, you know, writing original melodies, then focus on the things that you love. The thing you should pick is not necessarily what's best for your career, but it's actually what you have the most fun doing. So let's go on to the third tip. There's more than one path to make it in the music industry. I was obsessed with the idea at one point of becoming a touring EDM slash electronic producer. That's all I wanted to do. And I was really stubborn about it. I didn't want to do anything else. And honestly, that early in my career, I thought that mindset was actually pretty toxic. Although it's very good to have lofty goals and want to do stuff, I had an opportunity where Warner Music hit up my music group and they wanted us to make some music for one of their R&B artists. But at the time, being an EDM producer and an artist, it didn't really make sense to make music for other people. I didn't really understand the concept of like a placement or anything like that at the time. And I politely turned down the opportunity. But the reality was is that I didn't have any success at the time. I didn't know what even making money in the music industry was even about. And rather than being stubborn, and having some sort of fixed mindset about which direction I should go in the music industry, I should have been more open-minded and be willing to try things. I would rather have tried that opportunity with Warner Music and then decided after I tried it that I didn't like it. It's like food. You don't wanna say you don't like food before you actually try it. And I think the music industry is like this. A lot of the guys, especially in the hip hop industry, only think about placements. There's no other opportunity outside of that. Or guys in the EDM community only wanna to be touring DJs. The reality is, is that in 2023, 2024, there is more opportunity than ever that doesn't look like the old mold. People are taking their careers in so many different directions. People are becoming content creators, popping off on TikTok, playing shows, getting placements, doing songwriting for sync opportunities, or even look at Cymatics. Cymatics was one of those opportunities that if you would have told me 12 years ago that I'd be in charge of one of the biggest sample pack and, and sound design companies in the world, I would have said you were crazy. I would have been like, I'm not gonna do that. But it was honestly a blessing in disguise because I think I'm happier than ever running Cymatics, getting to work with tons of different producers, getting to make music whenever I want, not having the pressure of releasing it, making really good money in the industry. It's not something that I would have foresaw. And I think that that goes for a lot of people in the industry. So I just wanna you know, know that there's a lot of different ways to make it and keep an open mind. All right, let's go on to tip number four. Throw a soft clipper on your master. I had a friend on the Cymax team who always had the hardest hitting drums. He always had the hardest hitting beats. And I was like, dude, what are you doing to your music, you know? And this was a while back and he's like, dude, I just put the soft clipper on the master and do nothing else and literally just drive your drum super hard. You can drive your sound super loud, but as long as that soft clipper is on the master, it'll kind of hold down your music. I don't really want to go into super detail about this because a lot of people know that you can use like Fruity Soft Clipper on your master, for example, or if you would like, you can actually use Diablo Light, one of our plugins turn it into the soft clip mode and use that as well. And you don't have to really do much else. This will kind of keep your tracks under control. It'll make them not distort in a bad way, but it'll allow you to run your drums and stuff really hot and get that loud mix. All right, let's go on to tip number five. Just pick the best idea and dress it up nicely. When you're in songwriting mode, you're usually laying down idea after idea, messing with the song, copying, pasting elements, adding more to it. And I used to try and incorporate every little idea that I had laid down in my doll for a song into the actual song itself, when in reality, that was a terrible approach. One thing I learned from Cody from Internet Money when I went over to his house was is that he was laying down a few ideas, but it wasn't about trying to incorporate everything. He said that it's all about finding the best idea possible and then try to dress it up nicely, try to present that idea as best as possible. And literally I took this and my music got way better. So now after a creative session where I'm laying up down a bunch of ideas, I just sit back, I listen to the different ideas I had laid down in my doll and I just pick the best one and I try not to overdo it. I try to just dress up that idea rather than trying to do too much. And I think for a lot of you producers out there, if you guys just try to pick the best idea possible in your song and try to dress it up, I think you'll get a lot of success. Time for tip number six. Always look for new samples. Writer's block is a real thing for producers. There's times where I don't wanna make any fucking music, right? I am literally not even near my computer. I'm playing video games, it is what it is. And there's other times where you cannot get me 
off of the doll. And I think one thing that's always helped me out a lot is, is simply getting new sounds, updating my sample library. And the reason I'm saying that is, is that if you were to sit down and be a trap producer and you were to use a trap sample pack, trap melodies, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna make a certain type of music. But the second you get handed a vintage and soul sample pack. The second you get handed something with choir acapellas inside of it, or maybe even get your hands on an EDM sample pack. Without doing anything else, one, you're gonna be inspired because it's gonna be a lot of new sounds and you're not gonna feel bored. You're not gonna feel like you're accidentally making the same song over and over again. And your sound will naturally explore new areas of production without even having to try. This same thing also goes for plugins, getting new plugins and starting to play around new stuff. Sometimes for producers, it's diving into hardware. Other times it's limiting your ability to make music in a certain type of way. Like if I've been using loops a lot, I'll all of a sudden start writing everything from scratch. I'll just do something different. But for me personally, the best one when you're in that writer's block, it's just updating your sample library. It's very easy. And at Cymax, we're always coming out with new stuff. So I kind of have the luxury of always having the, the latest and greatest pack we're putting out. But I'm telling you, each pack we put out, it pushes me to a whole new area of sounds I didn't even know I could make. And I think it's been a really good way to keep me motivated at times where I might normally taper off. Number seven, if you don't do anything else on this list, you have to do this tip right here. Find a mentor. Music production is a very hard thing. I've seen producers spend years doing music production, spending a lot of time with it, but the reality is they've plateaued and they don't get any better. And one of the reasons is that they're not pushing themselves to learn from people that are better than them. Don't get me wrong, watching videos like this and watching other creators and tutorials and stuff is obviously great, but at the end of the day, I think it's better when you can find a mentor who can maybe get on screen share with you, who you can ask questions with directly or even call and learn from that person directly. Because let's say you were to produce for an entire year you might get so good but if you were to produce that entire year but once or twice a week you spent an hour with somebody who already has a decade or more of production experience all of a sudden that one year is like you're training with the fucking master sensei and it's really more like you put five years into it every single sport you think about people always have coaches and mentors to help train athletes and make them better music production is no different and the cool part about this is a lot of producers aren't making great money take it from myself who employs more producers maybe maybe than any other company in the world. There are a ton of producers who would love to work for 20, 30, $40 an hour, who would love to give you lessons once or twice a week. And that little bit of time that you get to ask those pivotal questions, they will help slightly course correct you. And over the long run, this will be the biggest hack that you can do to get great at production. It's not good if you're the best producer in your friend group. It's not good if you're just making music by yourself. If I'm in a room and I'm the worst producer in the room, I'm usually pretty excited because that means I'm learning a lot. So if you don't have one, I suggest finding one ASAP and a couple easy ways to find them is one, they don't have to be famous. They just have to make great music that you want to learn from their production techniques. So one, Instagram. A lot of people are posting their music nowadays on Instagram. Discord channels is a great place. You can dig around on SoundCloud. You can accidentally bump into people on TikTok. And I'm telling you, some of these big producers with all the placements, yeah, they're going to be a little harder to get in contact with, but you can find some low-key banger ass producers, even that I hit up all the time. There's people in their bedrooms who are incredible who've been doing it for a very, very, very long time. You know, offer them hey, could I pay you, you know, 20, 30 an hour, a couple times a week to help out? And that person would be more than passionate because it's not even about the money that if people spend a lot of time doing something, they're just gonna be happy to teach someone else. Those are the seven tips that I wish I knew when I started production. I truly feel like if I were to restart now with this kind of mentality, I would be a decade ahead of where I am right now in my music. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions about any of the tips that I had, feel free to leave a comment below. By the way, Cymatics releases an insane amount of samples. If you guys want high quality stuff, we actually have something called the free download vault. And this is pretty much over the years, every time we have a free pack, we put it in there. So if you wanna get everything in one place, we will link the free download vault and you can also find some free plugins in there as well. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and make sure you like and subscribe. Peace.